gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to go to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you on that day, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. This is the gospel of our Lord. To you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you all. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we rejoice with those that you send out to bring peace. We share with you the joys and concerns of our own journeys, and we boldly proclaim your name in all the world. Amen. It is strange to be back here. I never imagined when I went to seminary that I would be invited to come back to this place, let alone come back to preach here. Of course, I also never imagined that I would be a pastor, and I for sure never thought I would find myself shepherding a congregation in a very small town. I had big plans when I began seminary. I grew up in a small town, the daughter of a church worker, so you do everything in church. And I had no desire to ever go back to that spot. My dream, my end goal was to stay big. I was a youth director in Moorhead, Minnesota for almost 20 years, used to big city life used to a big staff. And I got excited about the opportunity to serve as an associate pastor somewhere with a full staff. I was looking forward to the idea of working in pairs, as we heard in our Luke text. I wanted nothing more than to not have to be all the things to all the people. I wanted to share the good news with others and be in a community who could brainstorm with me, text study with me, and become friends with me. So on a whim and a suggestion from a pretty convincing cohort friend, I took a rural ministry independent study class the last semester of my seminary career from Bishop Anderson. And the Holy Spirit went to work. My mind was blown and changed. Now not only am I pastoring a congregation that worships 40 people or less on Sunday morning in a town of less than 500 people, but I also serve as the Northwestern Minnesota Rural Ministry Mission Developer. I work with rural and small town congregations, as John said, that are looking towards the future with concerns and challenges, with heartfelt spirit, and with open minds on what the future holds. When I began this call as a mission developer, there was no plan for what this would look like. This was a brand new job, the only one in the ELCA, created specifically for me and for my strengths, and I was going in cold. I was feeling a lot like how I imagined the disciples were feeling as Jesus told them to take nothing with them when they traveled out to share the good news. The truth is, I have no idea what I'm doing. But none of us do. And even though we have a wonderful seminary education and incredibly intelligent leaders that continue to lead us, because every context we go into is different, we start over every single time. 
Those that Jesus sent out into the unknown were faced with the exact same circumstances. Can you imagine their trepidation? Can you feel their fear? I imagine they had a lot of questions for Jesus. What will we eat? How will we survive? My favorite, what if this doesn't work? What if we fail? These are also my questions when I go into every congregation that I'm in. And I also think that these are all the questions that we as pastors, as lay leaders, as church leadership, and even as Christians grapple with every single day. What helps us to persevere? What keeps us moving forward? It's our faith that gives us the strength to step out into the unknown, just like the 70 that Jesus sent out. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit that keeps us moving along. But even in all of this, even as we go out and trudge through the muck and the mud in the fields, I do that on a regular basis, or comfort those breathing their last breath, or we sit in the brokenness in the homeless shelters, through all the challenges, we know we are doing God's work. We all do this because in our hearts, it's a part of who we are, and it is bold. Maybe you aren't sure where God is calling you to serve. Maybe you have all but sworn off rural and small town ministry as an option. But the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways, my friends. Be open to exploring what it means to serve in a community that relies extremely heavily on each other. One that works together through the grace of God to make it through the tough times. Sometimes it may even surprise you. We don't know where we're headed on this journey most of the time. But I think that's the beauty in all of this work. I have no idea where congregations are going to end up when I begin my work with them. We don't have to have all the pieces put together. We don't need to be the expert in the room all the time. We can sit in the unknown knowing that it is God who is leading us through the work of the Holy Spirit and through our scriptures that we read every day. No ministry comes easy all the time, and rural and small town ministry will always come with its own set of complications. But I choose to embrace them, to enjoy the challenges, because that's what makes all of us unique. Rise up in the difficult moments and lead with grace. Step out of the uncomfortable and get dirty. Ministry isn't always pretty. It's hard work, and you have to roll up your sleeves and get dirty. My final words of wisdom from a pastor who sees the daily challenges of rural ministry firsthand every single day. In a word, world that moves mostly very, very fast, slow the heck down. Ride in the combines with your congregation members. Hand out coffee to the parents in the school drop-off line. Cover recess at the elementary school for teachers who are very, very tired. Sit in the coffee shops and roll dice for quarters with the old men on Saturday morning. Time is your most valuable resource and relationships are your most valuable commodity. This is true no matter where you serve. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We are not among those who shrink back and are lost, but among those who have strong faith. Trust in the Lord and trust in yourself. You can do the hard things. You can ride in the combines, I promise. Through the work and the breath of the Holy Spirit and through the work of Jesus Christ in all of us. Thanks be to God for boldness and for tenacity. Amen.